of new. I had recorded a devotional, and I should wait because I think it hesitated to start. <laughs> but this is a video response to a question that was asked about a devotional, Streams in the Desert, I believe, that posed the question, how can you minister to or how does God deal with a person who is brain damaged and it's a good question I mean all questions in my mind are good because my name's Michael and Michael means who is like unto God so there's always a question mark in it so I always think of every question as being good but what's better than a question is an answer and God always has an answer and we as Christians should have a response for the reason for the hope that lies within us because Jesus did respond to all that came to him in one way or another. Now, in brain damaged people, it's very obvious that something is not correct or has been hindering the functions of the brain to work in the way that they were designed. They're out of order. They're not correctly working. In the brain, we have what are called neurons, and, well, we have initiators and receptors, but they're neurons basically. And what they do is they exist as poles or like little electro prods. You could say metallic, but they're not, but they're chemically based and electricity passes between them. But they exist just as though our fingers were this far apart. And then right in between those connectors is fluid. And that fluid allows for there to be charges to go from this finger to this finger. So sometimes there's a electrical pulse going back and forth. That electrical pulse is the physical representation of what we call input. From this side would be input from this side. It goes into the process of our brain that causes us to identify that input as being hot, cold, familiarity, sensation, um, good, bad, different things that we would, our brain has trained itself to identify it and then to make it fit what we've processed already and brought into our brain by input. Now when the brain is damaged, it could be connected so that they can't make a connection and that the physical part of the body isn't working. Jesus said something interesting. The wise man of his day, Nicodemus, a elder in Israel, a rabbi, as it were, or just simply a person who was a sage, came to him and said, you know, we know you're a good man. You know, you've done these miracles. You've healed all these different people. We know no one can do it except to be from God. So, you know, we don't understand your teaching. And Jesus said to him, among other things, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You must be born of the Spirit of God, or the Spirit. And another way of looking at that can be, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You must be born from above. So, we know that the body is composed of a lot of different intricate details that we don't always understand and see because like when you look at the outside of the body you see fingers and you see you know fingernails and you see hair and arms and you take in food and you eat and you know that you feel and experience things because you live in this physical body but then when you cut it open you see that there's other portions of the body that's physical that affect how you do that for instance like your nerve endings and your muscles and the blood system and how if any of those go out of order they don't work the same thing is true from god's perspective is that he sees us as we're not just physical but we're also emotional and we are spiritual though spiritually dead so when jesus was talking to nicodemus he was trying to tell him look you see only the outward things that physically body that you're born from but he says where i come from above we see it as God and I, the Father and the Son and the Spirit, see it as you're dead. You don't have yet to be born what we want you to be born of because you were spiritually dead. So you need to be born of the Spirit. You need to have the rest of your existence come into being 
and to be started up, as it were, or to be fixed, or to be healed, or to be born in a new way, a new creation, something beyond what you just see, touch, and feel. Because you know as well as I do, there are things that go beyond your seeing, touching, and feeling, like emotions. Obviously, there's something more there, and you know that. So, when Jesus said the Spirit, he added that extra dimension to it. So, a person who's brain damaged, they have that inability to communicate physically, but it doesn't stop their spirit from being set free. Because if they are born again, then they have a spirit inside them that communes with God, and the person inside may be there without you knowing it or aware of it. Because even as I can feel inside me, the Lord at times just sitting there in my heart of hearts, in my inner being in ways that I don't understand completely, so too in a brain dead person, they have a spirit. Now, if they're not born again, if they're brain dead and they don't know God, then they don't automatically go to heaven and they don't automatically go to hell. You see, you can minister to the spirit of a person. You can actually pray for and allow God to work in the heart of a person because we're told that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the beginner of it and he is the ender of it. He completes it. He works in us to do and to will of his good pleasure. So God can work in the heart of a brain damaged person by simply you sharing the good news. Share the gospel. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about God. Tell them they can have a personal relationship with God. Put your hands, as it were, in their hands and hold their hand and just simply tell them the love of God that you have and the love of God that he has for them. And you'd be surprised that whether we accept the idea of the profession of faith or whether we know that there is someone inside who has made it, who is there with God, talking to him, then the realization of what you're doing will come upon them and you will know in some way when you talk to God that they have come to salvation. Because God is not unjust. God is not cruel. He's not mean. He knew that person would be brain damaged. So he can bring salvation to that person. But he's waiting for you to participate in their process of coming to the realization that there is a living God and that Jesus died for sins and that you can express that to them. And you could pray for their forgiveness because we're told that if you would forgive someone their sins, their sins should be forgiven them. And if you would pray for them, then you would have your request if it would be according to the will of God. And the will of God says simply this, It is not my will that any should perish, but that all should come to the realization of the salvation that has been given by, by and through the Son of God dying for their sins. So God's will is to save to the uttermost. God can save a brain damaged, brain damaged person as easily as he saved you. Because you were the one. You were the one that God is using today to touch the person that may seem brain damaged but may be spiritually mature or need to be spiritually born again. So today, go forward confident knowing that you can accomplish with God doing His will according to what He tells you to do for that person who needs Jesus more than they need anything else in this world because they will inherit eternal life to come. And the day may see you when you meet them in heaven with Jesus.